Hey guys, we are here. Welcome to the Savvy Musician Show. I'm your host, Leah McHenry. And today we are talking about a very interesting topic that I don't think that I've ever heard anybody really address before in the music industry. And that is how health and fitness affect your music business and affect your music goals. And the reason I say health and fitness, because I'm I've recently been studying a lot about this and they're really two separate things. Um, there's a lot of different components when we talk about health and fitness. I mean, there's the mental aspect, um, there's mental health, there's physical health, and sometimes the challenges that come along with those things. Uh, like we all have these challenges as normal human beings in a music business. And then I also want to talk about the discipline of having some kind of a plan and the way and the correlation between having a fitness and health plan and success in general. I've spent personally a lot of time studying uh, health and fitness plans in general and what you know wealthy and successful entrepreneurs do in their daily routines. And absolutely across the board, you will see certain familiar characteristics, common characteristics that successful people have. And one thing that I have adopted in my music business in general, and the whole reason why uh, I've had any success at all as an independent recording artist myself, is that I stopped studying the music business and I just started studying what works in general. And so I started studying, you know, billionaires, millionaires, successful people online, just going, what do they do that I'm not doing that I could adopt right now? And one of the things that I noticed that they did was they had very regimented health routines, whether that was like going for a walk every day or working out or having a trainer, um, paying a lot of attention to their health and having the discipline to do so regularly without stopping, really, there's a direct correlation between that and their success. And a lot of them will tell you that, that, that it definitely improved their success or um, accelerated it. And so I wanna talk about that and why that is. And I also wanna talk about um, specific mental things that occur when we are dedicated to our health and fitness and how that applies to the music business. And like I said, you might think like, how is that even related? But it's very, very related because every single day that you get out of bed and God gives you another day on this planet Earth, you're breathing. You are breathing and you are living. You are, your body is changing biologically. You're producing new cells every day. And you're either heading toward a better health or worse health. We're never just stagnant. And I think you would agree with that. Um, and so, you know, what are the state, first of all, the state of our health is going to affect what we're doing in our music business, right? So if we're struggling with depression or anxiety disorders or mental kind of things, I mean, a lot of us as musicians struggle with these kinds of things. I personally I struggle with anxiety and anxiety is very future oriented. Uh, depression is a lot of times to do with living in the past and things that have happened in the past. Anxiety is future oriented, worrying about the future. Okay, so mental health is a huge thing. And as long as you and I are waking up every day and God gives us another day to be on this planet, we're dealing with health. And that health is gonna affect what we're doing with our music business. Okay, so there's that daily struggle. Um, but I also want to talk about the physical element of having a discipline of some kind of discipline of health and fitness. And then I also want to talk about coaches and what role they kind of play in um, health in general and in success and the correlation between these things. They're all very, very important. So first thing, I got to tell you about this new book I started reading and I'm going to prepare you. It's a little bit sciencey. I'm going to read you this passage because I want to talk about I want to talk about the mental aspect because I read this and I was like, oh my goodness, that right there is why people who work out and have, and I don't just mean like for just plain aesthetics, but just the discipline of working out, that's why they succeed and why, you know, billionaires and millionaires out there, why they work out regularly. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to do this particular plan. I'm not saying any particular diet or plan or anything, but just when you hear this, 
you're going to be like, oh my goodness, that's why I, I, I make the connection now. Okay, so I started reading this book. Um, it was actually recommended to me by this one of my favorite economists out there, Gary North. And it, it's been out for a long time. And I actually, I think I knew about this book and I was reminded to read it. And it's called uh, Body by Science. And the subtitle says, a research-based program for strength training, bodybuilding, and complete fitness in 12 minutes a week. I was like, I'm reading that right now, 12 minutes a week. You know, um, this is a big deal. Okay, so I'm going to read you this passage. I'm warning you, it's a little bit science-y, but when we get to the part that I want you to hear, you're going to see the connection, okay? So this is a big deal. Here we go. I'm going to read. It says, so he's talking about this concept of this particular program. It's, it's called, he calls it the big five. You're just doing these big five compound exercises. And basically you're only doing one set of however many reps you can complete in like 90 seconds or less. And the whole idea behind this set is that you want to fail. Your muscles need to completely fail to the point where you literally couldn't lift another one if you tried with all your might, all your willpower. If you tried to lift that weight, you can't. It's done. Your muscle has completely failed. And at that point, you're done. That's it. You don't do any more exercises. And in fact, you need probably seven to 10 days to recover from that. And he's saying, this is the ultimate health program because you're getting all the benefits of a crazy amount of work without the wear and tear on your body of, you know, like long distance joggers who, who run for miles and miles and miles. They're, they have a lot of long-term wear and tear on their bodies. So he's like, how can we live the longest, get the best results and look the fittest in the shortest amount of time without, with the least wear and tear? And he's saying, this is the way to do it. Okay, so he's talking about this set and how to perform this set in a way that you're going to fail um, and get the maximum result from this exercise. Okay, here we go. He says, at the beginning of a set, your strength is untapped. Let's just call it 100 units of force. You, you will not choose 100 units of resistance, however, but rather 75 units to oppose your strength. Now, for inroading to occur, which is basically breaking down your muscle, you want the, which is what you want to do. You want to break it down so that it builds up stronger than itself. Um, the resistance to which you expose your muscle must be meaningful, which is between 75% and 80%. Hang on a second. Of your starting level of strength, okay? If the resistance you select is too light, your muscles will recover at a faster rate than they fatigue with the result that no inroading will, will occur. Okay, so if you're long distance jogging, there's no real inroading happening in your muscles. You're just jogging, 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 jogging. It's an endurance thing. And so their muscles aren't gonna build bigger and stronger the next time. You're actually kind of wearing them down. And so it's very, very bad for fat loss in that respect and built muscle building, which is, you know, there's a direct correlation with having muscle and longevity for how long you're gonna live, okay? So he says, using a slow protocol, so like lifting weights really slowly instead of like jacking them up and like powerful stuff, you're going to proceed to perform your repetitions, moving the weights up and down, okay? This slower speed of lifting eliminates momentum, increases safety, keeps your muscles under load for the duration of the set, okay? Now this goes on. He's, he's talking about how to do the repetitions. Now he's saying... Um, at some point, you're going to have lost your initial units of 100 units of strength, but your muscles are still stronger than that 75 units of resistance that you're lifting and lowering. You're now perceiving that the repetitions are getting harder. So he's going to tell you, you're in the moment here. You're lifting these weights and all of a sudden you're like, oh, it was easy at first. Now this is getting hard. And he says, your body instinctively doesn't like to be fatigued so quickly and you're starting to receive negative feedback. Pay attention to this. Think to yourself about when things are getting hard in your music business and you're trying things and you're getting negative feedback like this isn't working. I don't like this. Okay. Outside of your comfort zone. And he says, this typically manifests in a fervent, hang on a second, I got to move the page here. This typically manifests in a fervent desire to quit the exercise. Okay. This, you should expect this response is that your body's going to say, time to quit, time to stop, you're done. All right. Nevertheless, 
you soldier on, attempting to maintain a continual loading of your muscles and increase your concentration so as not to break form and unload your muscles. Don't drop the weight yet. As the difficulty level increases, you may grow anxious as you sense that muscular failure is approaching. This anxiety is a normal reaction. This is so important. Are you making connections yet? Because I'm going like, I'm having light bulbs all over the place. And then he says, you will begin to really struggle at this point and your instructor should try to keep you focused by encouraging you not to try to speed up, rest or pause during the movement. So you're doing these really slow reps and you've got an, and notice he's talking about, you need some kind of encourager, some kind of a coach, somebody there telling you, don't give up yet. Don't give up yet. Keep going, keep going, right? This is, should be happening. You need somebody there to tell you because mentally you're ready to quit. Your muscles are telling you drop this thing right now. And he's like, don't do it. Don't do it yet. Now he says, um, uh, so do not uh, unload the muscles, which is the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. If you weren't being supervised, you would probably quit at this juncture. Oh, there's so much to say about that. Okay. If you weren't being encouraged, if you didn't have uh, somebody to supervise you, encouraging you on the sideline here to keep going, you would quit right then and there. Okay. This should tell you right now, you need a coach. You need a coach. There are going to be times where you are trying to make inroads in your progress in your music business and it's not going to work or it's going to feel you're going to get this negative feedback. There's going to be people who tell you, what are you thinking? You're crazy. There's going to be trolls on the internet. You're going to spend money on ads and it's not going to work the first few times. And you're going to think, time to drop this weight. I'm done. I give up on this. And at that point, if you don't have a coach there to tell you, don't you dare give up. You got to keep going. This is when the progress is about to happen. You're going to give up. And that's going to be the end of it. And all your progress will be lost. And you were just on the brink of a breakthrough and you didn't continue. So he says, uh, but you are encouraged to try one more repetition. So he said, if you weren't being supervised, you'd probably quit right now, but you're encouraged to try one more repetition. This last positive portion of the repetition is now so difficult that it may take you 15, 20, or even 30 seconds to complete, which is going to feel like an eternity when you can't barely even move your muscle, you can't move your arms. As you slowly begin to reverse direction and lower the resistance, the weight begins to overtake your strength. You attempt another positive repetition, but the weight isn't moving. You can't get it up even if you wanted to. Your instructor now tells you to attempt to contract against the resistance. It's still not moving. While he or she counts to 10, your rate of fatigue is increasingly, your, your rate of fatigue is increasing rapidly now and your strength continues to diminish well below the resistance level. At the end of the instructor's count, you unload from the weight. So now you're just, you're letting go, release, release the tension. By the time the set is finished, your strength has been reduced to approximately 60% of what it was prior to starting the exercise, resulting in an inroad of 40% being made. Okay, now um, I'm going to read you this part here. If you're not making connections yet, pay attention. I'm talking here about the connection between performing these kinds of intense training routines where you feel like giving up. And if you don't have a coach there to tell you to press for another rep, you wouldn't. You, there's no, no way in hell that you would do another repetition if you didn't have a coach there standing telling you, get it up, do one more. All right. So this whole process occurred over a span of roughly two minutes. But in that time, your muscles became 40% weaker. And this is actually the key to building it up. You got to be broken down to be built back up. That's part of the, the biological process. This occurrence represents a serious threat, I say that in quotes, to your body because it was not aware that you were simply in the gym making weights go up and down. For all it knew, you were fighting for your life with a mountain lion. To the body, this was a profound metabolic experience, and at the end of that experience, it couldn't move, which means your body's like, if I can't move, that means I die. The next time, if a mountain lion is chasing me, I got to get bigger, stronger, faster, leaner so that I can survive the next mountain lion. Do you see? So biologically, that's what's happening. And there's, a, there's also a mental connection that we're going to make here with how we're approaching our music business 
pay attention. If this isn't exciting to you, well, it should be because I, I, I get light bulbs all over the place from this kind of stuff. This experience present, represented a profound stimulus to which the body will respond if given sufficient time, so it's not happening overnight, this is gonna be a long process, by enlarging on its strength reserve so that there will be at least some strength left over the next time such a stimulus might be encountered. Of course, now that you understand this process, you will employ slightly more resistance during your next workout routine to stimulate your body to produce another round of metabolic adaptation. Okay, listen to this. Bear in mind that as you fatigue during this process and as your force output drops, you're going to feel the window between your force output and the resistance you're using starting to close. You've de you develop an almost instinctual sense of panic a feeling that you're not strong enough to meet the resistance you're under. This is the make or break point in the set. If you understand that what you're trying to do is achieve a deep level of muscular fatigue, you can override the instinct to, es to escape. Escape in this context can take the form of either prematurely quitting and just shutting down or attempt to wiggle and jab at the weight to momentarily get out from under the load. Okay, we tell our clients, we don't care if the weight bogs down, we don't care if it stops moving, just keep pushing in the same manner that you did in the beginning. And if it stops moving, don't panic, just keep pushing. Remember, you've got to have a coach here telling you, just keep going. And, and you think you're gonna tell yourself that in the moment, but in the moment, you're not thinking that, you're thinking, I absolutely can't do anything else. You need that other person there to tell you that. In understanding, uh, oh, let me go back here. It's not an important, it's not important at the end if the repetition is even completed. You just need to keep going, all right? And understanding that your instincts run counter to achieving this degree of fatigue and that you have to intellectually override your instincts in order to achieve it is crucial. This for me is just like, this is huge. The most important thing for you to grasp is the nature of the process to be able to push to the point where physical activity becomes a stimulus for positive change, it helps to understand that it's okay to feel a little anxious or panicky during the set. After all, the purpose of the exercise is not to make the weight go up and down, it, it is to achieve a deep level of inroad to reach the point where you can no longer move the weight but still keep trying. If you have that degree of intellectual understanding, then you'll be able to override the instincts that would otherwise intercede to prevent you from stimulating the production of a positive adaptive response from your body. Okay, that was a huge section of this book, but there is so much there. And if you realize that this, what I just read there, that is why People who have a physical discipline to do some kind of workout where they are pushing beyond their comfortable boundaries, that is why they're successful. Because the minute something gets painful, the minute something gets hard, the minute you have these instincts, physiological instincts, mental instincts to quit and say, this isn't working, I'm ready to drop this, I can't go on anymore, that is the moment where progress is actually occurring and you are just on the brink of a breakthrough and the moment you give up there, you have now lost all your progress. You are now losing the benefit of all the work you did up until that point, all that effort, all that time, all that money, all that energy that you put into getting that result. If you are about to give up right then, you lose the entire benefit. And if it weren't for having a coach right there to say, hey, one more, get it, get that weight up, don't let it go. If you don't have a coach there to say that to you, you're going to give up. I have coaches. You have to realize, like, I practice what I preach. I have probably three, four mentors in my life that speak into my life. I have a health coach. I have a business coach. I've got mentors around me. I have consultants. I have people around me that I go to because I know I'm human. And I know that if I rely on myself, if I try to coach myself, I'm gonna hit a ceiling on that. There are moments where maybe I'm running ads for my music business. Maybe, 
you know, I'm, I'm after a certain result or an objective in my music business and I'm having trouble because something's not working. The tech isn't working. How many of you get stuck in the tech? And if you don't have somebody there to help you through it and say, I've been there. I've been, I know all about that. I know how this works. Here's how you overcome that obstacle. Or even just somebody to cheer you on the accountability of saying, you said that you have this goal. You're not allowed to give up. You're not allowed to have that bad attitude about it because you didn't like the way that worked out at that one point. If you don't have somebody there to help you through that process, you, the likelihood of you giving up is very high. And so that's why I wanted to read that to you is because as I'm reading this book and I, I read some, sometimes these biology, like workout and health related books just for my own uh, reading pleasure. And it's interesting to me and it's something I really am working on for myself. Um, and, and it's amazing to me sometimes the connections between, you know, lifestyle, health and fitness habits and just success in general. And I, and I just love that. I was like, that's why people succeed. That's why people who work out generally have statistically, they're statistically more successful than people who don't. And so this isn't about, you know, having a beach body. This isn't about all of that. We're just talking about the discipline of, of sticking with it even when it's painful and that progress doesn't happen until you actually feel like you're ready to give up. And this is just a life principle. If you feel like you're ready to give up, you're in the right place. You're in the right, you're, you know, you're doing something correct is if you reach that point now and again. So, um, another interesting point to think about is, Hey, Olympians, Olympic athletes, they're the best in the world, right? They're the cream of the crop in the whole world. What Olympic athlete do you know that does not have a coach? There isn't one and they're better than everybody in the entire world. They have a coach. Now that coach might not be an Olympic athlete. That coach, they may have never won medals, but they are so experts. They are so good at seeing the big picture. They're so good at being able to pinpoint, you know, the flaws in, 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 you know, the exercises that athlete is, is uh, performing and they're able to correct it in such a way that they just have that gift to be able to do so. That Olympic coach doesn't have to have won, won gold medals to be a good coach, but they got to know their stuff. They got to be an expert in it. So it's important that if you have a coach that they're an expert, they know what they're talking about. Um, I personally, for me as a coach, I personally um, do have a music business. And so I'm, I, I love to share with you guys the things that I'm actually learning, things I'm actually doing. Um, and even though I don't need to do that to be a good coach to you guys, I, I love it. I mean, I, I would have a music career, whether I was ever a coach or not. This is just, it's built into me as a human. I have to create music. I have to create art. That's part of me. Um, and because of that, I mean, that's how Savvy Musician Academy started is that, hey, the things I was able to do as a stay at home mom and, and market my music online without ever doing a single tour. I still have not done a tour. Everybody, I mean, I get asked daily if I'm when, if and when I'm doing the tour and I have I, I don't even have one planned yet. I have an upcoming album release this year and all that's good and dandy. But most importantly, I love to be able to share with you guys the things that are working. And the things that are not working, things are changing. You know, algorithms are constantly changing. There's a lot happening on this platform and other platforms out there, you know, and the question is what works, what's working provided that you have amazing music provided that you have raw talent and you have the goods and you have something to sell what's working and how can you maximize that? So that's my job as a coach to lead you down that way. But honestly, I think one of the main uh, and most important things I can possibly do is, <laughs> hi, surprise. My son just walked in from his nap. Okay. Um, hang on. Now I have to text my husband because <laughs> my, my son is up here. Oh, uh, I'm on a track. <laughs> oh man. So that's why I, it's important to me that I'm able to experiment and give you guys um, real time feedback on what works and what doesn't work. So, and the other thing to, I think is a really good point to understand is that there's no cookie cutter solution 
for any diet or exercise program. I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I'm very health conscious person. Um, I'm a little crunchy. I'm definitely into like, I'm a health food, not kind of a thing. Um, but even so, you know, I've tried all kinds of, uh, you know, diet programs, exercise programs out there. And one thing I've learned is that there is no cookie cutter program that solution that works for absolutely everybody. There just isn't. And just like that, there's no cookie cutter marketing solution that works for everybody. So one of the things that I do that's really important that actually I'm, we're doing this in our brand new elite coaching program is I give you guys a 60 day business plan and it's tailored to the fact of what are your specific goals? What are the holes that you're missing right now? We actually go through and talk about what are the assets you have available to you right now? We do a whole asset audit. By asset, I mean, what are your albums that you have available? What are the merchandise you have available? What are the things you have for sale that you can make available to sell right now? And then we do a whole audit on that. We do pricing. We do all this, that, and the other thing. And we come up with a plan for your annual income. And we reverse engineer the whole process. So that's, I mean, this is something that seven figure, eight figure businesses do. And it's something that you guys need to start doing um, in your own music business. I don't care if you're only making $300 a month right now. This is something you need to do. And if you're not, uh, do it now. Um, but I would also encourage you that, hey, if you are not hitting your music income goals and you want to build a music business that lasts and grows year after year, you need a clear plan and you need a coach, right? If Olympic athletes have a coach and they're the cream of the top, how much more do you and I and average people who are trying to get into this music business thing, the new music industry, sell more music online, how much more do you guys need a coach as well? And it's not just myself that's coaching. We actually have a team of coaches that are all experts in particular things, websites, uh, Facebook ads, and I'm, I'm pretty good at Facebook ads myself. Um, I've been running SMA for the last two and a half years and doing very well um, as well as my, my music business. So we have, we have experts, we have uh, people coming in to help you with particular things that you're struggling with. And so if you are looking to grow your music business and you need a clear path and you need a coach there telling you to lift one more rep and you need that accountability, then I'm going to encourage you guys to book a call with our team. I'm going to post a link here. I think it's um, callsma.com. And if I have that wrong, we're going to fix it. And we'll put it, uh, a link in the comments there. But uh, callsma.com. I don't know, Steve, if you're here, if you can tell me if that's correct. But I'll put a link regardless. And book a call. We're actually going to talk to you on the phone. We don't do, we're not doing sales pages. We're not doing any of that stuff. We're actually going to talk to you and see if and how we can actually help you get to the next level. It's so important that you have a community around you, that you have a coach, that you can say, that's my coach, and I have somebody guiding me down this way who's already been there and done that, who's already successful, who already knows what they're doing and is navigating this whole internet marketing thing, the digital marketing space. It's so important. So I um, encourage you, book a call with myself or somebody on my team, and we're going to help you get clarity and figure out what do you need to do next. And whether you end up working with me or not, um, it doesn't matter. We're going to help you get clarity. You're going to come away knowing this is my next step. This is what I need to do. So I would be honored uh, if you book a call and let's see how we can get your music business off the ground this year and get it totally humming and get you a huge ROI within the next year. So it was my pleasure. Hope you found this motivating. I'm motivated after reading this book and we will see you guys next time.